Sophie, we are back for Premier League weekly predictions. I feel like the pressure's on me this season after I had a good one last season, so I'm hoping I can follow it up with a really convincing start. <sighs> yeah, okay. Before we get into the predictions, guys, let's go for 3,000 likes to mark the return of the weekly Premier League predictions. It takes two seconds to do that, so do that. So do it. Make sure to subscribe as well if you haven't already. Help us push towards the next milestone by hitting that subscribe button. And like I say, share your predictions. Without any further ado, Sophie, let's get into them. Let's start with Friday night's game, which is Manchester United versus Fulham. Manchester United, Sophie, massive club. There's always going to be big expectations, but can they deliver? Last season, they finished in eighth place, but they did win the FA Cup. Um, Ten Hag, He's got to do something good this season. Yeah. Otherwise, I think I don't really They'll see them. They'll be running them. out of patience, won't they, with them? Yeah, they were, they're not making a lot of progress if they don't do anything good this season. Mm -hmm. They take on Fulham, Sophie. Fulham are just a very solid Premier League team with Marco Silva and very capable of getting something at a big team. They've brought in Smith Rowe, but they have seen a couple of key players going out like Polinia. Polinia yeah, um, Manchester United, they will be without Yeni Loro, who's not fit to play in this game. But, Sophie, credit to Manchester United for their business this window. They've brought in Joshua Zerchi. Uh, Delict, uh, Masrori, and we've seen Bruno Fernandes, their captain, renewing his contract. So it's been a busy window from Manchester United, but a good one, I think. Um, and if you think back to last season, Sophie, they did win on the opening day 1 0 against Wolves, but they only just got it and they should have had it's a penalty given against them. Yeah. Oh, Onana went kung fu on someone. I'm going to go for Manchester United to get the win. I'm going to go for yeah. Manchester United 2 1. I can see I'm getting off to a bit of a slow start actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna go down the middle on this one. I'm gonna say a one one. Fulham are a pretty solid Premier League team right now and I think they're more than capable of going to Old Trafford and walking away with a point. So right now, sitting on that fence. One one. One one. There you go. Share your thoughts, guys. I'm going for Manchester United. Sophie is going for a draw. On to the next one, Sophie. A ground we've not seen in the Premier League for over 20 years. Portman Road, it's Ipswich Town versus Liverpool. What an opening game for yeah. Ipswich, Sophie. I, I wish them all the, the best, best this season. Are, it's going to be hard, though, and they already know that. This league is difficult if you've just come up from the championship. Yeah. The odds are at least two out of the three teams that come up go down, possibly all three this season again. Hopefully not. Um, as for Liverpool, though, Sophie, this might be the perfect time to play them because... They've changed the manager. Arnie Slot's come in. Obviously, he's had pre-season, but this is going to be his first competitive game. And maybe things might not be settled just yet, but he has still got that core of players that got them to third place last season. Yeah, and I don't know if you've seen any of the pre-season. I know you don't look too much into it, but they have looked quite good. The game against Man United, I know it's pre-season, but they looked a solid outfit. So I think they could have a really good season. Yes. Now, Ipswich Town's business has impressed me. Um, and I'm not saying they're not capable of getting something in this game, mm. but I am going to go for Liverpool, but I'm going to go for a few goals. Ipswich yeah. 2, Liverpool 3. Oh, I thought we might go the same scoreline then when you said a few goals. Uh, I'm going to say Liverpool 3-1. I think Ipswich Town are more than capable of getting a goal. I'm not going to rule them out of getting anything out of this game, but I do think it's a big ask. The way they play football, it can be very attacking, which I think could leave them vulnerable at some points. That is why I'm going to give them a goal, because we saw last season they were very, very good. But I think they might get exposed a few times by Liverpool here. So, 3-1. 3-1. Yeah, both back in Liverpool to get three. I'm going for Ipswich to get two. So, it's going for them to get one. Share your predictions on that game. Great to see Ipswich back in the Premier League. On to the next one, Sophie. And it's at the Emirates. It's Arsenal versus Wolves. Now, Wolves will be hoping for no VAR decisions to be going against them horribly. The whole season, um, yeah. yeah, they were the team that got the most decisions against them, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, their opening game against Man United, they should have known then. Yeah. It's going to be a bad season it, for it, that. It set the tone for the season. It did. As for Arsenal, Sophie, I have backed them to win the Premier League this season. I'm being yeah. bold, but if they're if they're going to do that, they have to make sure they win games like this. Wolves are decent. I think they'll be mid-table this season. But the reality is, even if Wolves have their best players and play at their very best, Arsenal 
have just got so much quality. Yeah. Um, I'll go for a fairly routine Arsenal 2-0 win. I think it'll be relatively comfortable, but Wolves are not a team that are going to get completely thrashed. Yeah, I'm going to say 2-1 Arsenal. I do think Arsenal are going to get the win here. I can see why you've gone for them to keep a clean sheet, because defensively they did look good last season. But I think on the opening day, anything can happen. And I'm going to award Wolves a goal. I do think they're a solid team. And who knows where they'll finish this season but I do think they might finish a little bit higher than last overall Arsenal are very solid aren't they and who knows you've got it to be their season and who knows it might be but they need to start it with a win and I think they're going to do it 2-1 there you go both going for the Gunners um yeah I, I do think they might do it this season um but they've got to be so good uh, so so good Literally like to win the Premier League. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the reality. You've got to blast your way to yeah. the title. You can't drop points. On to the next game, Sophie, and we go to Goodison. It's Everton versus Brighton. It's Everton's final season at Goodison because next year they will, of course, be playing at their new stadium. And let's hope it's a good season, a season to remember, and hopefully a season where they're not involved in a relegation battle. They take on Brighton. Brighton have spent a fair bit of money. Mm -hmm. um, they've brought in a new manager, of course, in Herzler, and there's going to be decent expectation for Brighton to challenge for a top eight finish. Yeah. I'm going to go for Everton, though. Okay. I'm going to back them on their own turf. They weren't great when we saw them in pre-season, but... But then the game after against Preston, they were better, so... Exactly. Pre-season, isn't it? Exactly. I'm going to go for a Sean Deitch masterclass. 1-0, Everton. Okay. I'm actually going the other way. I'm going to say 2-1 Brighton. I think some of the money Brighton have spent now, they need to start off quite strong. Not entirely sure what to expect from the manager, obviously. It's his first season in the Prem, but he's had enough time really to start sorting out his players, his style of play. So I think they'll get off to a good start. And Everton, as we said, we saw him in pre-season, but that is only pre-season. And they were behind in terms of fitness and tactics compared to Coventry. But I, I do worry a little bit about Everton this season. And we'll, we'll see how they play in this game. It's too early to judge. But right now I'm going to say they start the season with a loss. 2 on Brighton. 2 on Brighton. Share your thoughts on that game at Goodison Park, guys. On to the next one, Sophie, and I'm looking forward to this. We go to St. James's Park. Newcastle United take on Southampton. A long old journey for those Southampton fans. Will it be worth it? Um, great achievement last season. They finished in the playoffs in the championship and they returned to the Premier League after just one season. Russell Martin has got to do something pretty special, though, to keep them up because it's going to be a very difficult season yeah. for anyone to stay up down there. As for Newcastle, Sophie, um, it's the start of the season. Most of their players are fit, and when they've got everyone, they are bloody powerful. They are. I like Southampton, but I think Newcastle are going to hit some goals here. Newcastle, 4-1. Oh. So I'm, I'm going to say 3-1, which I think sounds a little bit kinder, but Newcastle at home... Very, very good. When they've got all their fit players, as you mentioned, they are a very strong side. Long old journey for the Southampton fans, so you'd hope for their sake that their team would be able to get something. I'm giving them a goal, but that's as far as it goes, I'm afraid. 3-1 to the Geordies. 3-1. Both going very similar there. Um, expect Newcastle to be sniffing around European places, don't they? They have to, really, yeah. Yeah, Eddie Howe. Big season for him, but a big season for Russell Martin at Southampton. Okay. On to the next one, Sophie. It's Nottingham Forest versus AFC Bournemouth. Um, two teams that have been sort of joint at the hip over the last few seasons. Both came up from the Championship together. Both stayed up in their first season and both obviously stayed up last year. Yeah, yeah. The difference was Bournemouth were mid-table, Forest just got over the line but there's cause to be optimistic for Forest coming into this season um, you just feel like they need to hit the ground running yes. their first yeah. two games are Bournemouth at home and Southampton away if they don't win either of them I'd be a little bit worried for Forest if they can get three four six points it'd be a brilliant start and we could maybe be looking at a season where Forest are actually mid-table and not looking over their shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, Bournemouth, they've got a very good team, a very good manager in Iriola. Been fairly busy in the market as well. We must obviously highlight though, Sophie, that AFC Bournemouth have lost their top goal scorer in Dominic Solanke, who signed for Tottenham just a few days ago. It's a massive, massive hole to fill and could that affect the Cherries coming into this game? Possibly. And as for Nottingham Forest, um, you know, they balanced the books by selling some players, but they've been busy bringing some players in. I'm tempted to go for a draw, 
Bournemouth do tend to get the better of Forest on a few occasions. Mm. I'm going to go for a home win. Last minute goal, I reckon. Yeah. Forest 2-1. Is that the city ground, Sophie? It is at the city ground and I do expect them to get most of their points there. However, I am going to sit on the fence this one. I'm going to say 1-1. Bournemouth were really solid last season. They had a great points tally. Obviously, we know what happened with Forest last season. It wasn't their best season. But this season, clean slate. They've had some decent business, so I would expect them to do better. I am going to, as I say, sit on the fence and say a draw, but I wouldn't be surprised if this went either way, actually. There you go. Okay, you're going for a draw mm -hmm. on that one. Share your thoughts for the first game back at the City Ground. Let's go to the London Stadium, Sophie, where Claret and Blue take on Claret and Blue. It's West Ham versus Aston Villa. Could be a really decent matchup. I make Aston Villa the more fully formed team and the, the team with more quality, really. Mm. Um, after last season's achievements, of course, and they will be playing Champions League football, a fantastic yep. manager there in Unai Emery. And mm. the way they have attacked this transfer window with Matson, Barkley, all those names coming in, yeah. they could be even better um, than last season, which sounds a bit crazy to say. I've put Villa in my top four for this season. But you know what? I'm going to give West Ham a result because they've just brought in a good player in full crook. Yeah. Very good player, of course. And they've got a new manager with Lopetegui. Maybe a bit of a new manager bounce, but I'll go for a draw. 1-1. Um, I'm going to have to back Villa, I'm afraid. They looked very, very strong last season and I expect them to start strong this season. Um, I know a few people have said, oh, maybe the Champions League football will take it out of them. So I think it's important to start really strong now. And yeah, Unai Emery, he did a great job last season. I expect him to do another good job this season. Not saying West Ham aren't a good team because they are. They're solid and they've made a few good signings. They also brought in Somerville the other day. Yeah, so he's point. an exciting talent. I am. I think it's going to be a tight game, but I just edge Villa. So 2-1. Yeah, that's kind of where I was. I was yeah. torn between a draw or just edging Villa. Just edging Villa, yeah. There you go. At least we've gone different. Mm -hmm. On to the next one, Sophie. It's a London derby. It's Brentford versus Crystal Palace. Two teams that I would usually say are mid-table, and they might be this year. Uh, but just after how Brentford were last season, I've got a couple of reservations, uh, but I'm happy to be proven wrong. I've got a real soft spot for them. Can they win on the opening day against Palace? Hmm... Do you know what? It's a matchup of two very good managers here, yes. Thomas Frank and Glasner. Yeah. The way Palace ended last season, they were frightening, especially at Selhurst Park. This one's away from home. I'm tempted to go for a draw, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go Brentford 1, Palace 2. Yeah, I'm back in Palace as well. I'm going to say 1-0. At the moment, they still have Gehi, but he is heavily linked with a move away. Yeah. Um, which I think that is going to be a big miss. So you need to get big money for him in order to replace him. But with Palace, they've got a good business model. Yes, they sell their players, but they then find other players that they turn into stars. So yeah. that's how they're doing well in a way that they're managing to stay in the Premier League. But you need to be looking to push on. And I think they've got the right manager in order to do that. I would like to see them do well this season. I think start the season off with a win. 1-0. 1-0. There you go, both back in Palace. Um, Elise is a big blow, isn't it? Yeah, that's a big miss. But at the moment, still got Eze. I know Gehe's linked, mm. heavily linked away. Uh, uh, Mateta. Mateta as well, yeah. And who knows who they'll bring in. I've got so much confidence in their scouts. Yeah, so I think you, they'll be fine. You feel like Chaddy Riyad could be a good player for them. Um, like you said, very good points. Very good at replacing the players. And as for Brentford, um, still hold, holding on to a lot of their good quality. So... They yeah. could be dangerous. Um, on to the next one, Sophie. How about this? The big matchup that will probably be all over Sky. It's Chelsea versus Manchester City. Um, Man City, of course, they won the Premier League last year. You can say what you want, but they are bloody brilliant, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Just keep doing it. The mentality, um, you know, to just keep winning is incredible to be so motivated and you could say what you want about them spending lots of money. They've just been the best either way. Um, they could get hit with punishments this season, but less said about that, the better. Let's talk football. As good as Man City were last season, they couldn't shake off Chelsea. It was two draws between these two last season. Do you remember that bonkers game at Stamford Bridge? It was 4-4. Yeah, that, yeah, a great watch as a neutral. Yeah, and Cole Palmer scored that last-minute penalty, of mm -hmm. course, a former Manchester City player, and then they drew, I think, 1-1 at the Etihad. Um, do you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if Cole Palmer scores against his former team again here, but... 
I'm going to go for Man City. Uh, I think Chelsea will make it close. They could be really exciting potentially with Maresca, but um, maybe he might take a couple games to, to get going. But as for Man City, they're already established with their manager being there for so long now and Guardiola. Credit to Manchester City, by the way, Sophie. Obviously, they beat Manchester United in the Community Shield last weekend. It's the first time they've won that in a few years. And will it give them a boost coming into this game against Chelsea? The only thing I will say, though, is sometimes Man City starts slow. Um, they can. But yeah. I'm going to go for them. 2-1 Man City. Yeah, I would be surprised if Man City didn't win this. Uh, they played not so long ago, pre-season game. I know it's pre-season, but Chelsea didn't look very good, especially at the back. Uh, obviously, it ended 4-2, so Man City put a few goals past them. Not going to look into that too much, but they'll know roughly how Chelsea want to play this season, and I think they already know how to exploit them. So, for me, I think this could be quite convincing. I'm I don't want to back too many goals, so I might just go 2-0 Man City. I would like to see them keep a clean sheet. Looks like they're going to have Edison again this season, and I think yeah. that's important. Anyway, I think Man City will start the season with a win, 2-0. Okay. There you go, both back in Man City to carry on from where they left mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. On to the final game then, Sophie, and the final game is Monday night's game at the King Power. It's Leicester City versus Tottenham Hotspur, the two teams that were locked in a title race um, back in 2016. Leicester, of course, won the league and Tottenham finished third in the two-horse race. Um, this time round, Sophie, Leicester back in the Premier League, maybe not quite what they were. Um, already a lot of people think they're going to struggle. Um, yeah, because if you look at their team, you think, how did that even win the championship? That sounds incredibly harsh and... I'm not sorry about it, actually, because if you do look at that team, you think, how is that going to cut it in the Prem? Well, they've lost Dewsbury Hall, which is a big blow. They have. Um, they've had a couple of decent players coming in, deckled over Reed. Leicester City have also re-signed Fatawu, who was, of course, there last season when they were in the Championship. They've also brought in Caleb Okoli as well. A couple of players there. And, of course, um, Steve Cooper is the manager. I think one thing he will do for them is make it like very defensive and sort of siege mentality. If they get results at the start of the season, they could be okay. Uh, if not, you could see Leicester fans getting upset and you know them getting rid of him. And then with the possible points deduction, it could be a bit of a mess of a season. As for Spurs, Sophie, um, very entertaining last year, but yeah. couldn't quite get that top four finish just down to the lack of consistency. Um, cause to be optimistic for their fans, I'm sure. And I wouldn't be surprised if they were in the top four. I do like Ange, I do like Tottenham, but... Going to go for a surprise result here, and we're going to back Leicester. Oh, I'm going to go with Steve Cooper to get a very defensive performance in there, and they're going to grind out a 2-1 win here. I'm just okay. going for Leicester. I've backed them to go down, so to make it up to the Leicester fans, I'm going to give, give them, them a win. win. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I think at some points in the season, they are going to have to get a win somewhere. Um, it's just very, very hard in the Prem, we saw it last season, the three teams that went up, same three that came down, it's getting harder and harder each year, so I would like to see at least one of the teams stay up this year. Yeah. Um, I would like to see them be in it, I would like to watch their style of play under Steve Cooper, I hope it's an entertaining game, but we saw with Ange, he is, he leaves himself open, so who knows, Leicester might get something, oh, I don't know, I'm going to back, oh, Spurs 2-0. Now. Yeah, I think they've got the quality there, really. They need to get off to a good start, and they did last season, so I think they could do it again. There you go. Now. Yeah. Based on the two managers, though, this is the most defence versus attack game we've ever seen. Yeah. Cooper is just going to be building a wall. I know, that's why I'm, I don't know what and, to expect. And just, just going to be attacking that yeah. wall. But who knows? Like you said, if Leicester get goals on the counter-attack, they might win. And that's what I've gone for. Share your predictions down below. That wraps it up, guys. That is the predictions for game week one of the Premier League. That's our 10 predictions. We are back. We will let you know what the scores were in week two when we predict the Premier League again. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you. It is good to be back. Yeah. Like I say, share your predictions. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will be back in the next one. Take care. Peace out.